you know, that, was, that was another thing I, I, I like John mentioned was um, try and possibly combine drill roto zip and just use a changing chuck or gearbox that's connected to the chuck so that you have one tool that can do both the routing and drilling because he was saying like now that the other companies are also making you know these roto zip type tools they're obviously going to be better than the craftsman version so craftsman's needs going to have it's going to have to do something to set them apart from all the other ones so you know, i don't know maybe you know set it up so that the drill and the, and the rotor zip are together as one piece. Uh, you mean as a front drill? Yeah, like a regular, like, but like keep both the modular idea, you know, like the handle can be changed so that you can position it sure, to be whatever. in the router or drill or yeah. make the chuck removable so you can put in a routing yeah. chuck or... But are you saying like, you know, take this off and put in a drill... Put in the drill chuck, chuck so you can you use some drill, put yeah. put in some uh, drill bits or uh, screw heads. I just, I, since this is a non-varying speed, obviously, yeah, that's, that's going to add more components to the yeah. inside because the drill, you need to be able to have that varying speed. It's also torque control yeah. if you're cautious about drilling your uh, products. <laughs> I, I've actually learned the hard way that torque control in a drill really goes a long way if you don't want to use it. Yeah. I've had some really expensive things here. You know, you got to gently drill, and I got it at the highest setting just because I want to drill it. And before I know it, I'm either too far in, or it, it's ripped a larger hole because of the speed and the warp of the tool. It's made just that disaster more or less and fix anything. That torque is like, you know, it stops at the, at the torque you need to stop when you want it to be very comfortable. But is this really meant to be a drill though? I don't think so. Is a rotor stick, you know, bought to drill or to cut? Well, it's bought to cut, but that's because it can't drill, and you already have a drill, so why not go ahead and make it one so tool? So you're saying combine two tools together? Combine the two tools, yeah. Well, make them. Make them. Out of but is that thing, let's say you're the professional. One thing I don't personally like is combine tools. Because that means that you're getting a little bit of the best, a little bit of the worst of both. More or less, when I like to go buy, if I want to go buy, uh, do drilling, I want to go buy that one drill that was meant to time for drilling because it's going to do that drilling perfectly. Uh, well, assuming. You know, and if I go buy this it's because I want to go cut something and I want it to just cut. I don't mind a multi tool set once in a while, but I feel like sometimes it cheapens things up a little bit. But if, if you don't do it right. The identity of the tool yeah. seems to be like multitasking with all these, you know, random accessories yeah. and shit. Right. And if they're gearing it towards the. Not, uh, the beginner homeowner that wants to go out and redo their whole house with something and they're going out and buying some new tools, but I would think that. Is, imagine you have the DeWalt drill, real nice, but then it also has the removable chuck and an accessory to make it a jig. And now you have this massive drill with this expensive, well not expensive, I'm just saying, this extra accessory and the removable chuck that now you can make that into a cutter. How do you feel about that? That cool? Is that like you know that makes life more easier, or does it kind of ruin the whole aspect of the original drill? Something to think about. Yeah. You know what I mean, now I put it in the actual in the actual drill. Well, we're trying to make it into here, but I want to make that into that drill. Would it make sense? Would that make sense? I think it'd be a little confusing. How thicker does that manual have to be all of a sudden? Yeah. <laughs> right. All of a sudden, you, you know, you don't already read that that <laughs> one. Now you want to add something else for that user to be confused about, or you know, I eventually have to break something before he's like, maybe I should have read that manual. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and the there's, point. there's again with the manufacturing company. Manuals, yeah. I think, are only for assembly for you. Why, like a tree house, if you got to assemble it. Right. You definitely need a manual. Right. You got all these small parts, but right. Other than that, a tool should be self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and then you fuck up your tool the very first time you use it. Right. <laughs> like, you know, you're saying um, you kind of like the idea that you can be a little bit handicapped person when it comes to these kind of things. You mean, so this breaks, you know, or, or the drill, the uh, bit gets a little uh, worked or something like that. Maybe if you have enough tools, you'll tap that hole again, get a larger. That's what I like about this. Those aren't tapped, right. that's a nut on the inside. So if you strip it, you can take it apart and put in a new net. Yeah. That is cool. That is so simple and easy. That would make me, that wouldn't, I wouldn't mind opening this up and just replacing that. Even if that took some disassembly. 
but it's better than having, it's better to have that than having, uh, what's that other piece? The other handle? No, the attachment. The, this part? Yeah, you know, I'd rather have something like that than when this goes out, now you can't use this entire tool. What if that was really working? It's still spin. Yeah. That one little thing, you're done. John doesn't use it no more because that broke and maybe this just didn't hold up anymore. You know, he's letting us take this apart as students because he doesn't give a crap anymore. <laughs> and this probably cost a pretty penny. I think they go about 80 bucks still. I wouldn't want to open something up that's just 80 bucks for the hell of it. And I sure as hell wouldn't want it breaking down on me after a few uses. Yeah. That's damn true. something of quality yeah. yeah right and that's how I feel with a lot of things it's like why waste money buying something cheap that's gonna break if it only just costs a few more or a third more to buy the more quality tool and have it last for a lifetime yeah I have no problem spending the extra money for yeah. a better my, quality my tool is, uh, if you have the money up front it's worth it but it also comes to manufacturing too it's that whole yeah you know to make this one piece you know in a certain type of manufacturing it's gonna take one custom made tool you know, it's going to cost you not that much, you know what I mean? Because you're going to make two or three once that's done. So that's what you wanted to have. But if you want to make this in the millions, now you're thinking about mold injection. Yeah. You're thinking about some other kind of fabrication. But you got to go spend that $30,000 tool that's going to punch this out a million at a time. It'll last. It'll keep punching these puppies out. But you had to invest $30,000 up front more or less than a little bit to hope you get some money back. You know, you really are concerned uh, to make that, make a lot of money and make a lot of this. So, but it costs a lot of money to make this at the millions. But then all of a sudden, you know, when you had that one special tool to make two or three, it might have costed you a couple hundred bucks just for that one piece. But when you mass produced it, it cost you, what did we say this, that it could have cost us 10 cents? You had that notion that they were rapidly producing those at a really cheap cost. So then all of a sudden, it makes it kind of just cheap. But you're right, the first concern I had when I saw it was A, visuals. It looked really bulky to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the one thing that I remember when we first, first, first got it was this bulkiness that I did not like. Then I remember I was trying to figure out that handle and I was kind of a, a, a dumbfounded, you know, until I think you pointed out the lever, so then that made sense. But uh, automatically, quickly, you know, it took some two or three heads to make this. You know, <laughs> uh, how does this work, you know? It took me till today to know how to put this in together. I don't think I, I, I even knew how to put that together the first day. And until now, I, I kind of just cramped that in and I figured you needed some force. There's, yeah. I thought maybe I'm doing it wrong, I didn't want to force anything. Yeah, but it actually was. meant you had to force it. Yeah. Plastic though, I wonder how long that's going to last before you know, you're know you pissed off all of a sudden. Uh, what was the other thing that I didn't like was the button. I really did not yeah, enjoy I'm that not button. sure if I want to learn how to get used to that button or not. You know, That's yeah, one of the things where they, or John was saying, you know, they learn how to use the bad stuff on it and they just right. work with Getting it. Getting used to maybe the bad design. Maybe the button is, is that idea, you know. One thing that, you know, that I'm going away from now is the airflow. You know, that was one of my yeah. concerns. But now really seeing it in action, I, I, I found maybe there was some really cool little physics to that yep. where it actually created an awesome vortex. You know, actually one thing is a good, you know, notion to, to know is, uh, you know, like in the back, uh, flatbed trucks, some guys think or some people think that if you have the back open, it's more airflow, yeah. right? Yeah. But it actually works backwards. The whole idea, the reason that actually works when it's closed is that the air comes in, hits it, and creates a vortex in the back of your truck, meaning that the new air flows over the truck, meaning you're more aerodynamic. And when you put it down, the air goes over the top and forces it downwards, putting more drag on the car. You're actually dragging more weight and you're actually flowing through air. Okay. So they actually figured out actually you save more gas oh. by actually leaving that thing up. So there's a lot of people that just think, you know, take the, take the, the back off because it looks kind of cool. And actually creating more drag in your car, more or less than actually 
air flowing. Through, yeah. Which I thought was kind of, I would have never guessed that. You know, I, you really had to know your physics, or you really had to understand some things about that to know that that's why they meant that. So now, I'm not too concerned about the airflow. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that airflow, uh, the way it works. This one makes sense because this is straight down. You know what I mean? This is straight down. You, you know, th this is obviously not meant to be held by one yeah. hand. You know, this is not meant to, to be, it's, it's heavy, it's a lot of metal. You know what I mean? This thing is definitely, you know, I need some really thick uh, grips on this one to hold it, let alone that it's a really fancy grip. But yeah, that was one, but what, what missiles did you not like? I mean, what was the first impression you got when you saw this?